hi tom and uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak uh, uh, and then you know have this interview in the very short time uh, i'm really glad that i get a chance to uh, like you know speak to you on morco uh, ai search because it's an exciting times for retrieval in general and exciting times for uh, deep learning ai and all of these areas um, uh, i know like i think uh, morco has been doing interesting work and the demos have been quite cool uh, from what i have heard from community and today i want to just uh, ask few questions on uh, uh, what marco uh, is and how you have really stumbled on this particular problem and uh, how you want to bring this to market and uh, for folks who are like really new to marco uh, and tom tom hammer is the ceo of marco and um, uh, he they have been doing a fantastic uh, search engine not a vector store maybe <laughs> uh, not just a vector store i let um, talk more but then um, but then it's more than a search engine and like you know it does a lot of things so over to you Ma uh, tom i think um, uh, please tell us your story who is tom hammer like you know how did you stumble on this proper problem yeah firstly um thank you so much aravind am, am i saying that right is it aravind yes, yes. perfect yeah, yeah. well um yeah it, thank you so much for having me on um really excited to join and and tell the story um i guess we can start from the very start you know i i um Originally, um, was studying AI at university. Um, I was interested in embeddings back then, back sort of 20, 2015, 2016 kind of time. And um, it's just, it was, it was basically one of the reasons why I got into doing Marco was uh, because um, in 2021, um, just going back into, into AI and seeing how much AI had changed and, and how much it improved um, was, was pretty, pretty astounding to me. And I, at the time, I was working as a software engineer at AWS. I was working on RDS, so the Relational Database Service. And um, I think people don't really understand how much AI actually improved during the years of kind of 2019, 2020, 2021. It was really just a transformational period um, for AI. And, uh, and you know, so, you know, at working at AWS as a software engineer, um, I saw this opportunity um, in embedding-based search. And uh, what we... In particular noticed was that vector databases were starting to come out i think pinecone had recently done its seed round for example um but it was vector databases are really just one part of what you need to to create a a, a really good information retrieval system and so what we built with marco was an end-to-end -end system so it's not just the vector database it actually includes the embedding generation it works really well with images as well as text so you can use multimodal um, uh, multimodal models as well. And uh, Marco is also configured um, with a lot of advanced configuration and functionality. Um, so uh, for example, you can use combinations of images and text. Um, and we're seeing a lot of usage of Marco, particularly on the cloud side in e-commerce as well, um, because there's a lot of image data that is uh, particularly valuable from, for, for e-commerce users um, that's just not being used at the moment. And uh, that's what a lot of that's where a lot of our, our customers are finding value. Interesting. Uh, I think uh, my background is more, as you know, like it's from Elasticsearch. And uh, I did realize that after a while that uh, we knowingly or unknowingly uh, search on e-commerce sites, a lot of like uh, uh, image related features. And um, uh, and we unknowingly re realized that the search really works well. Uh, but there's a lot of work that is done behind the scenes and uh, from the engineers back in the day uh, when vectors were not so popular and it, eventually when vectors made into like every area i think uh, as an academic problem it is always there and it, vectors is like a solution that's been proposed for quite, quite some time so it's pretty interesting to see that's where i think the demo and everything uh, i mean like while you explained about marco is marco open source like i, I would like to know uh, more details about that part and if you could show us a demo it should be really amazing as well yeah absolutely so we have marco open source um you can find that on github um marco ai slash marco um you can take a look at that you can download it you can run it marco is just a single docker container on your laptop you can run it on an m1 mac you can run it on a windows or, or a um or, or a linux machine um Marco is also available on the cloud as well. So we have a fully managed cloud service that you can also check out. Um, so you've kind of got both options there that are available. Cool. So uh, would you like to like showcase uh, about how to get started with Marco and uh, how do you like, you know, uh, 
maybe how their initial developer experience are getting started with it. Absolutely. So what I have uh, for this demo, if you can just, yep, perfect. So I've just prepared a short demo for today. Um, and what I'm going to be showcasing is just a basic image search um, example with Marco. And so what we have here is a list of images. So I can just paste this in quickly to show you what we've got. So this is just a list of image URLs. And each of these URLs um, corresponds to an image. So I'll just quickly tab out and show that. Um, just stop the screen and then I'll present my browser for a second. Um, so here's an example of what the images look like. So they're from an e-commerce data set that we've, we've got internally. And you can see this, for example, is a, is a, a black um, button up short sleeve t-shirt, for example. Oh, well, short sleeve shirt, rather. Um, so I'll tab back to my terminal. Um, okay, so I've just loaded in this list of images. Um, we also need to, I've got Marco actually running this terminal here. So Marco is already running. Um, and you can run Marco, by the way, in, in a single Docker command as well. You can also run it horizontally scalably using Kubernetes, but um, for this, I've just loading Marco in as a, as a single container. Um, so importing the Marco um, Python library and then um, just uh, connecting into the Marco instance, so um, which is running on the local host on this EC2 machine that I'm using. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an index. So um, we've got some settings here. So this is this model is a Leon um, VIT B32 model. And uh, B32 is the base model for, for Clip. Um, it's also the, the, the Leon version. So Leon is, is a really interesting data set, um, actually built originally um, by, a, by a secondary school teacher um, and uh, it's been we actually become the, the base of, of a lot of uh, machine learning model training. So super interesting story there. But in terms of this model, um, we've got uh, OpenClip base model. Uh, and so we're going to use that um, to power our image search here. And Marco supports actually hundreds of, of different open source models. You can actually bring your own models and you can also fine tune models on the Marco Cloud platform as well. Um, but for this demo, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to use the base clip model and we're going to be searching over these images um, that we've just plugged in here. So I'll add the next line of code. And so this next line of code, what it does is it just creates a JSON object from each image. So you can see here that we've got, um, uh, we're creating a, a document, which is just the image URL. And then we're going to call that image, that field image. And then we're going to add the documents. And then this bit here, this tensor fields component will um, tensorize or, or vectorize um, that specific field. So what it's doing is it's taking this image, it's processing it, and it is uh, converting it into this uh, into these embeddings, these base, these uh, B32 embeddings. So um, we've just done that, and now we can search against the index. So um, mq.index, um, so this, this bit here, and then um, Searching is as easy as we can just enter some keywords in here. So um, we can just say um, button up shirt, for example. So this isn't actually, so as you can see, some of these images do, have, some of these image links do have some sort of keywords in them, but these are actually not uh, in its current market configuration. It's not actually going to look at that. It's just going to look at the images themselves, which have been converted into vector embeddings. Um, so I'll also put a limit here, limit equals two, let's say. And then so what we've got right here is this um, link to this, this black men's shirt. So that's what we looked at before. Um, and then if we go for a different query, let's say, um, let's try um, uh, women's clothes, women's dress. Um, we now get this uh, blue dress, and so I can show you what that looks like uh, in my browser. Um, so 
just presenting sub screen and present. So um, we've got this address here. So um, you can see that Marco is able to kind of understand it's it's able to process the image, convert it into embedding, and 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 sort of allow this really simple uh, text to image search. You can also actually put in the URL of an image as well. So if we want to actually search using this image, we're actually able to do that too. So um, I can just stop sharing here and tab back to the. So um, image to image search is as simple as actually just replacing this text query with a link to an image. Um, and it'll actually in the background pull in this image and then it will, will do a query. And we can see that this is matched to the original image as well, but also the second result here is actually a women's skirt as well. So it'll actually be able to do image to image um, sem semantic search as well as text to image you can also use, uh, and you know, I won't show this for the purpose of this demo, but you can use combinations of text and images. You can weight them in different proportions. Um, but one of the things that Marco is really good at, especially when you get to scale, is that it can actually download and process these images in a really performant manner. And this is one of the things that we've invested a lot in. So if you've got a large image-based data set um, and you want to be able to search over it, Marco can do this incredibly performantly. So that's kind of the demo. Um, simple image-based demo just showcasing that you can really do that image search in in just a few lines of code in Marco. Interesting, interesting. I think, uh, like I said, I it, it looks really simple. The developer experience is so nice. Uh, but is it only available in Python? Like, I think, I know that Python is, like, now more popular, and then, you know, there are more people recreating collab notebooks and stuff. Uh, but then, uh, is it, do you also have other SDKs for, like, say, JS SDK, or how do other developer ex people access? Absolutely. So as I said, you know, Marco, um, you can deploy Marco on a Docker container. You can also deploy it with Kubernetes, um, but it's it's a REST API at the core of it. So um, you can implement Marco in any language that, that you'd like to, to use. So um, I guess with, with some programming languages, you'd need to, to implement that, that um, client yourself. But um, if you're comfortable with REST APIs, then Marco is, is really simple to use. Yeah. While, while all this is great, also, uh, uh, Tom, how about, um, you know, search also means a lot of other details, like say, for example, uh, there are aggregation faceting or filters kind of experience, or I'm still talking about the e-commerce. I'm not talking about general retrieval uh, or like full text search features, but then like just specific. So would, would you be uh, also having more of those flair as well come in as you progress into more, more building Marco? Absolutely. So that was just a really simple example of how you can use Marco. Um, but Marco also supports uh, filtering, so you can you can filter based on certain fields. It it, it actually supports a full query DSL, so you can actually um, write quite complex filtering logic if you need to. You can also on Marco um, use a mechanism called rescoring, so you can actually take um, your your vector similarity logic, and then you can actually weight that based on certain numerical fields. So you can actually influence the search, let's say, based on the popularity of a specific item or the freshness of a specific document, let's say. So this is this is absolutely possible. You can also configure things like if you want to actually um, get just a little bit more, uh, basically trade off some disk space and, and get just a bit high, more highly relevant search, you can actually chunk the images um, into, into smaller images and you can use that patching to actually then be able to, to focus in on certain parts of the image, for example, as well. So there's lots of different functionality that you can you can apply to, to this image search. This you know is a very simple example of what you can do. Yeah, amazing, amazing. I mean, uh, the developer in my mind, I think, uh, would not stop me asking more questions. But this is even the last one. Hopefully, like you know, what's what powers Marco? Like you know, I think uh, it looks too powerful and then uh, too good uh, to build nicer demos and then you know maybe very easy uh, when you compare it with many other distributed storage engines or uh, so what powers marco in general like you know uh, uh, is there a specific library or you have built everything from scratch uh, or I, again like another tangent that i want to you to tell me more about is like you know how difficult is the learning curve as people uh, adopt marco 
because they come from probably a familiar search engine or like an RDB mess based search engine, et cetera, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Marco under the hood. So we've got kind of two components. So we've got the Marco inference engine. So we've built all of our own inference technology um, built on top of Torch. Um, but a lot of the, the image uh, downloading, for example, like the, the multi-threading, the, the way that that um, performantly, I guess, pipes the images through the GPU or CPU, for example, all of that logic is kind of contained within the Marco open source project. Um, and then under the hood, we're using Vespa as, as a vector store. So um, Vespa is an incredibly, um, yeah. incredibly impressive project developed by Yahoo. Um, it is though, it, one of the, the pieces of feedback that we heard a lot about Vespa is that Vespa is actually very hard to, uh, Vespa can be difficult for some developers to actually set up and use. And so Marco actually makes this really easy for developers as well. So you can actually um, have Vespa running, um, but you actually don't even need to know that Vespa is running, for example. So um, this was also a problem that we, we solved with Marco, having this kind of inference layer and then also the fully managed kind of the, the managed Vespa instance um, underneath it. Interesting, interesting. So, uh, Tom, you also mentioned about, um, you know, fine tuning and of course, no inference, but also like you mentioned about embedding models. Uh, and when it comes to building something like a RAG app where you have a vector store, which, which is like a very common trend right now, it's a commodity kind of an architecture, um, wherein uh, you bring in a store, uh, like you you kind of like convert your data into vectors and then like, you know, you aid, uh, you take the aid of like a vector store and uh, pay it with an LLM and then, you know, you kind of bring in um, the relevant results when a question is asked, an LP type question is asked. So, uh, I want to I want to understand like you know uh, how far you are going. Like you know, are you only vectorizing the large data sets and making it available for querying from any large language model, uh, like be it proprietary, open source, or custom deployed, anything, or you yourself are going to self serve these large language models, or how, how does that work today? So, in terms of the embedding models, that's all computed within Marco itself. So we, um, we we don't yet have functionality that enables you to, to call um, embedding models outside Marco, um, but that's that's something that we're looking to add at some point. Um, but Marco has basically been um, built around uh, users who, who want to have that control over the embeddings and how they're generated, have really low latency, have really high processing throughput, for example. Um, but in terms of large language models, we actually have integrations with Langchain, um, we have an integration with Hamilton, we have an integration with Grip Tape as well. So a number of different libraries that will allow you to um, hook in Marco as part of your RAG stack as well. So this is, a, this is also a very common use case for Marco. Interesting, interesting. Cool. Uh, and, and, and then like, I think you also mentioned about uh, uh, GPU based databases or like, you know, how uh, maybe Marco is accelerated, like, you know, uh, did you do anything more specific when it comes to, because there are very few databases today are like fully run on GPU from, from the point of, uh, you know, access and, and then, you know, performance and stuff uh, is, is uh, and then uh, at GTC, I was at NVIDIA GTC as well, wherein uh, I think uh, Jensen uh, was talking about accelerated databases and uh, their own surveys and stuff like that. What do you think about um, GPU oriented databases and like, do you think that more and more uh, databases would also like add support and work very closely with GPUs and stuff like that? Yeah, so this is something we've invested a lot in at Marco, just being able to run these models really performantly on, on, on GPUs. We, you can run Marco with um, multi-GPU, you can run Marco um, obviously with clusters of GPUs, you can have uh, an inference cluster of GPUs and, and run Marco like that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think GPUs are, are incredibly important to, to running Marco performantly. You can also run Marco on CPU as well, which can be good for some text-based use cases. Um, and uh, yeah, we've really invested in, in in the flexibility as well. So being able to run a variety of different models um, and have them kind of set up with the correct kind of configuration um, and, and, and the correct, um, uh, yeah, th those correct configurations so that they can run performantly as well. Yep. So uh, one last question on the on the relevancy and uh, those factors. I think uh, one of the important things for search uh, earlier, even full text search, is like you know what you're searching on. There is no add add on or like there's no angle of hallucination in between. Maybe it will not bring up the relevant documents, uh, but at least it will match up what is there. Uh, there is always two tenets, right? Uh, in search, uh, where you have precision and recall, where you either choose more precision 
oriented documents where you just go very structured way or like where you still go have unstructured way of querying but then you have a bit of recall uh, and not everything so but now i think with uh, hallucinations and you know uh, model model becoming more and more uh, less uh, trustworthy or faithful uh, so how do you look at this uh, relevancy precision recall and faithfulness in fact actually some of these is also quoted in the open ai developer day and there was an eval framework which is like you know pionate this particular graph and people are talking about it so what do you think about these factors in general how do you solve that well i think one of the really big advantages with embedding based search is that you will always get some kind of result out of the the database there'll always be some kind of result that you'll never have that issue with lexical search where if a certain keyword doesn't match then you, you'll get no results right and this is actually incredibly powerful for e-commerce so for example if someone searches for um a, a bathrobe let's say it could still bring up images of let's say um towels or let's say like uh something something you might um uh, something kind of related to that concept um, and, and this is actually very, very powerful for e-commerce websites that can show kind of something similar to the query if the exact query isn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't match. So um, I think that's one of the, the, most, the most powerful components of vector search. But I would also say in terms of, in terms of relevance, um, one of the things that we've invested in is, is our fine tuning service. So you can fine tune models on, on Marco Cloud. Um, the other component here that that's um, that's, that's really relevant is uh, that we're about to release actually our own uh, clip model, um, which has been fine tuned by a technique that we um, uh, that, that we actually um, have created um, in house and um, developed actually with a lot of our um, larger sort of e commerce customers as well, um, and uh, this actually makes a dramatic improvement. Um, on clip as well it's it's a new kind of um, contrastive training technique and uh, this this is actually incredibly exciting as well so we've really we've invested into um to actually improving clip training as well to to improve relevance um, one of the other aspects of this that's really exciting is that it allows us to actually generalize clip so you can actually train clip not just with text and image pairs but you can actually train it with text on both sides um, of, of, the, of the clip training. Um, and what this enables you to do is drain clip models that are not only good at text to image uh, comparison, but also really good at text to text comparison. Um, and this is actually uh, incredibly valuable, again, for a lot of e-commerce use cases, because you're, you usually want to search text and images in the same search. Um, we've also made another modification to clip training that enables us to not only uh, say that this text image pair are related, which is the, the sort of standard clip training, but you can actually put a score on, on the clip training. So um, you can say that these two things are related, but with a high um, higher score than these other two things. Um, and this is also incredibly valuable when you're working with user interaction data and, and training clip models as well. So we've really invested a lot into improving um, relevance and, and building actually custom machine learning technology um, that makes this that, that makes Marco um, incredibly performant and incredibly relevant. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Marco sounds really cool. I think for those who, who are uh, lo looking at the stream, uh, do do get to the GitHub dot uh, com slash Marco AI slash Marco and then give us give them a star and then also like you know uh, give it a shot because I have tried uh, Marco and I've seen the demo I think which I've been sharing here. Uh, while while Tom hasn't been uh, did not share the demo, but if you would look at the output of it, very interesting, and uh, something that uh, I think back in the day a lot of e-commerce uh, companies always want to build uh, to assist their use cases. And it's not maybe just e-commerce, Tom. I guess right there are several other use cases in the search itself uh, that's very very much like driven with uh, similarity and relevancy in general. Uh, so quite excited to see the project and uh, you know. All the best in in your future, and then you know maybe uh, we'll do more community work in the in the in the coming days. Uh, so thanks for joining today, and uh, great to have you, and uh, great to have this session. Thank you. Yeah, really appreciate it. And um, for anyone who's listening, um, I'd encourage you. We're we're about to release our paper um, on GCL, which is this generalized clip training that we've 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 created, and um, this will be released actually Wednesday of this week. So definitely stay tuned for that. That's going to be super exciting. We've shown some really dramatic improvements over the initial OpenAI um, benchmarks that we'll put out. Um, and, uh, and I think I think we're super excited. It's really groundbreaking uh, state-of-the-art research. So definitely encourage you to check that out.
congratulations uh, Rom, and then all the best for marco on the paper release see you thank Thanks you so much, much. Really cheers great bye